it's cracking everybody new video so this video right here is gonna have to be kind of quick i'm on break this video um has to do with a question in the comments somebody asked but he asked respectfully he said with all due respect why is it that mexicans from southern california don't give head up head up fades to blacks in prison right and right after that there's a guy he's constantly hating you know hating and you know making negative comments about raza not surprisingly from the safety of his living room um but he said oh because they're all so small so they have to use weapons which is a great tactic for them all right um but since you asked respectfully i'm gonna answer respectfully uh, i do want to say though before i get into the story that you know this individual there's a couple of them that keep making these comments so first of all shout out to my soul section all my black viewers my black subscribers which i have tons of them that show great support to me but um for these these few um hating ass motherfuckers um you know it's a trip that um it's been my experience in prison that the ones that have that much animosity were always the victims. They had been victimized probably due to their mouth, you know, um, and a lot of times they ran because of their mouth. And it's a thing within them. It's an insecurity within them that they can't let go, that they were exposed, that cowardness that they have within them was in it was exposed by a little essay you know so i get it um but in my experience behind those prison walls those that are that are really involved in shit, those that are really pushing lines they respect their adversary you know it's not personal it's business i never go into names i never say organizations but i want to say something real quick so my first time going to the shoe pelican bay after getting cleared out of C1, back then you had to go through C1, C committee, and then you would go to whatever building. I left C1 and um, I went to C4, right? The day after I got there was canteen. Now, because I had just got there, my money wasn't cleared yet. It takes about 30 days for your money to follow you. Why? I don't know. There's computers, you know, you just push a button and it follows you. But anyways, so they let out the first cell and again, I'm not comfortable with saying names. I'm not comfortable with saying organizations, but for this reason, for these petty ass dudes with these small thoughts and small minds, I want you to listen to this. The first cell that came out was a man by the name of Bambari, a BGF, a G. He came down to the cell and he introduced himself to me and my cellie. You know, he got our names and he said, I'm Bambari, you know. All right, cool. You went to the store and they hand you your 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 canteen back then and little brown sack lunches you know and put all your chips in there you know boom, boom. and after he got his canteen he came over to our cell and he gave us chips and he gave us some sopas you can only get 10 sopas back then and back then canteen was only 35 dollars a draw and this man this black man showed that respect he's knew that we had just got there here you guys go enjoy that and we're like, hey, thank you. And we looked at each other when he walked off like, damn, it's like that here. That's how it was. Again, went to the law library, signed up for law library, because back then that's where everybody communicated with each other. That's where everybody showed their face, you know, had their name heard. And I went in one of those legendary bottles from the clica. Those of you that know what the clica is, that's all I'm going to say. He was in the tank directly across from me. And he said, did you meet that Africano Bambari? And I said, yeah. And he said, that's a good dude right there. He said, we went to war with them a lot back when we were in San Quentin. He said, that's a solid motherfucker. If he ever needs anything, look out for him, right? But see, these petty motherfuckers have never been through nowhere. They don't know how to respect an adversary. They don't know how to keep it business, right? so there you go clown put that in your pipe and smoke it and figure that out try to wrap your little ass head around that because that's how it really is now as far as head up fades 
it needs to be abundantly clear. Raza, I'm pretty sure for the Vatos from up north is the same thing, but for down south, they don't give anybody a head up fee. Raza are not allowed to put their fists on each other. That's not allowed to put their hands on each other. So why give somebody else outside of that rampla a, a different type of courtesy? The way the Raza deal with things is this. If you don't get along with your Sally, then there will be efforts made to separate you from your Sally. If you're separated from your Sally, but that issue still persists, then okay. Since you can't seem to work it out with work, because see, if you can work it out with your fist, let me put my fist over, your fist, then you could work it out with your your your, hand, your your words. It ain't serious. But if you pursue the issue and it's serious, then they're each going to be handed a knife and they're going to meet either in another cell, go back into a cell together and deal with it with knives, or they're going to meet at a certain part of the yard and everybody's going to know about it. Handle your business. Because that's the only respectable way to deal with an issue if there's a problem. That's the way the Raza look at things. Um, you know, I understand like the blacks have a different way of doing things. That's their way. Nobody's trying to put them down. But understand also with the Raza from Southern California, you make a mistake, they're not going to ask you to go do burpees. They're not going to ask you to write an essay. They're not going to ask you to run laps and work out a whole yard. Nah. They're going to punch some holes in you and see how your heart responds to it. Do you go back to your cell and try to patch yourself up? Do you get took into the dirt? Go keep your mouth shut. Go to the hospital. Survive if you're lucky and come back and say, I understand that. You know, I'll do what I got to do. And do you go and put in work to make things right? And do you learn a lesson? That's how the Raza from Southern California deal with things. So when you're when I'm asked, when I hear how come the dudes from down south don't give blacks face, has nothing to do with fear. They're willing to strap up with you. You get your knife and I'll get mine and we'll meet somewhere. How is that cowardice? You're still a lot bigger. You know what I mean? But see, that's the thing. A lot of dudes ain't willing to go there. You know, they just want to, you know, oh, I'll beat you up. And yeah, Rasa are a lot smaller. That knife is always going to be the equalizer. Can you, can you, first of all, can you make one as good as uh, a Meikano? And then if you can't, do you know how to use it like a Meikano? That's the difference. That's the edge that a lot of Rasa have. They know how to make weapons that are vicious and they know how to use them. They know where to hit you. They know what it, what to do because they have to know. You know what I mean? So that's my quick answer. Um, you know, I, I know there's going to be haters in here and, you know, that's fine. Homes. You know, enjoy your hate, you know, love your hate. Wrap yourself up in that shit. You know what I mean? Um, but me, I choose to be positive. Um, I enjoy all the positive comments that I get. I enjoy the growth that I'm getting. And don't forget, haters, those of you making them comments, you're helping me with the algorithm. I appreciate you. Every time you make a comment and you think you're woofing on me, I appreciate the view and the comment. <laughs> I don't think you know how this works yet, player. But uh, you go ahead with your victim mentality, man. Hate every Mexican you want. But you exposed yourself, probably, and then they just help to clarify it. You know what I mean? Let me clarify what you really are in your heart. And then your mind couldn't take it. So I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you get your thumbs ready, start a fire on your motherfucking keyboard right now. Um, and meanwhile, I'll be at work making good money. Um, and then I'll go to lunch, and I'll love this, this beautiful sky and this fresh air. I'll put out some more content that's going to help somebody hopefully make a better decision in life. Um, I'll even sit here with this loud ass truck where hopefully uh, you guys can still hear me. But with that said, I got to go. Tell the ones that you love that you love them. Okay. Don't ever pass up them opportunities. You know, don't don't leave the house without kissing your, your lady and your, your kids. And, you know, all these shootings and shit that's been going on lately. You know, it, it, it should be evident that, you know, we're not promised another minute, you know. So let's be thankful for everyone that we got. All right, you guys, take care. I'm out.